Welcome to Rascal Apiary, and we're going to show you how to build a shim. These things are useful. Welcome back. Today we're going to make shims for your beehives. So this is a shim that's going to go in between your brood boxes and your supers. And if you're looking for more ventilation, what we suggest is do a shim or a brood box shim, super, shim, super, shim, super. That way you get more ventilation, you get more jobs for the bees. You don't have this bearding that goes all the way up the front of your hive or hanging real low. Lots of ventilation. Uh, drawbacks to it are pests can find their way in, but if you do small entrances for each of the shims, you don't have this, uh, this problem of pests really coming in because at each shim, and, and you'll enjoy this as a new beekeeper, you'll see one or two bees just sitting outside those entrances. Uh, all my shims that I make have entrances on them. I don't make any solid shims because if you do that, then you're now uh, breaking the law of bee space essentially. So if you do a brood box and then a shim and a super and the shim has no entrance, you now have this gap there and the bees will definitely fill that. So below the, the super bottom of the super frame and the top of your brood box will connect essentially. And that's something if you want to do, you could do that because there's many uses for that. Uh, it makes it difficult to take the frame out, but once you do take the frame out, then you can scrape that wax off and make candles. And if you have a wax producing hive, that may be something that you want to do. I don't do that. Uh, we have a different way of doing wax producing hives, but our shims, first you need wood. Pretty self-explanatory. And the way that I'm going to build them is super simple. The dimensions are going to be exactly like an eight frame hive box or whatever the outer uh, dimensions of the hive box is. We're going with the outer dimensions. Okay. And I'll post them on the screen as we go, but just keep in mind the tools you're going to need is a miter saw or some way of cutting a 45 degree angle. You don't have to have a miter saw. You can use a hand saw, but make sure you use your triangle and mark your 45 degrees. And then you just need a table saw. At the end, you'll need a uh, brad nailer or some way of securing the shim together. And what I do is I glue and then I use a brad nailer. If you want to use a screw, you can use some of the uh, smaller screws, maybe longer, but smaller. On the screen, I got the sizes for the 8 frame and the 10 frame, uh, short side and the long side. Here I'm cutting the, the wood. You'll see that I cut one to size and then I just go ahead and use that piece as a template to cut the rest. So it's just a little trick I do so I don't have to keep pulling out that tape measure. All right, so I got my short and long side cut. That's 13 and 3 fourths is the short side and then our long side 19 and 7 eighths. So this is for an eight frame box. If you need 10 frame, five frame, two frame, whatever box you need, just adjust those measurements. So we're just measuring the outsides of those boxes. So if you just, if you don't have one and you gotta Google it, Google it, it'll tell you the outer dimensions of the box and then just cut your wood to that length.
All right, so I got all my short pieces and long pieces cut. And yes, if you're asking yourself, can't I just butt end these together, glue them together, screw them, and now I have a shim? Technically, yes, but I don't understand why I had to go to school to learn about angles, geometry, and I'm making butt end uh, shims. That doesn't make sense. I'm going to cut 45 degree angles on all of the pieces of wood and I'm going to put them together kind of like a picture frame. The other thing I'm going to do is I've, I've taken half of the short ends and I'm going to put a notch in them as an entrance for the bees. All right. So what we have here is a 1 fourth by 1 inch entrance for the bees now. wanted to show you this real quick it's not exactly a hack but if you're not really a woodworker check it out so you put a piece of tape there that way every single time if you're doing multiple pieces of wood you can line up exact same spot every single time so once you get the cut right that you want it throw a piece of tape down and just butt right up against it and make your cut Okay, so I got my miter saw set at 45 degrees, and I also put a piece of tape. So what I can do, what I can do is line up the ends of my sticker or shim piece, and then when I lower the blade, it's right perfect with this corner so that I can hit that 45 degrees on all of them. There's not going to be a whole lot of wiggle room. Um, if I didn't have the tape, maybe I'm trying to guesstimate and it's here and there and all over the place. I want it to be pretty much the same every single cut. So there we are. Now we have our very first piece. It's gonna sit like that. We'll have the long ends attached straight to it like this. And you got your entrance. We're looking good. And we're back. Ensure that you're cutting on the same side when you go to flip it, flip like this. That way you get it. Okay, so we have our shim. It's not put together right now, but I have about 50 more of these to cut, so I'm not gonna make you watch me do that. But you just put it together like this, throw some glue on it, and then brad nail it or screw it together, and you are done. This is super simple to build, and if you have a better way of doing it than doing my, my corners like this, to me, this helps me square it off really easily.
um, without having to take out the, the triangle every single time and line it up to make sure that it's exactly perfect. Um, the thickness for me being one inch is perfect too because if it is a little off, then when I stick it on the hive, there's plenty of room to cover all the edges. Uh, like entrance, ventilation. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope this is super simple like I was talking about. If it's not, leave me a comment just saying, hey, you're struggling, you have this issue, or you're missing tools, or whatever. Um, and let me know if you do have a better way of, of building shims. If you use shims, how do you use them? Are you using them like I do, where you just put them in between the supers all the way up, or are you just using them as a top entrance uh, just under the inner cover? Let me know right there in the comments. And stay tuned. I don't know what to stay tuned for. <laughs>